Welcome back everyone to Hermonomics. Today we're going to be talking about elasticity. So basically elasticity, as I have written up up here, is a responsiveness to a change in market conditions. The reason why this is so important is because you can determine um, different market conditions. For example, how do we change our consumption behavior? So that's a big thing we use elasticity for. So specifically, we're going to look at price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand is just looking at the change between two important variables. So for this, we need to look at the law of demand. Law of demand states there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity, meaning that there is a downward slope to your curve. Now, price elasticity of demand is going to look at um, this relationship a little bit closer. So basically, what's going to change this relationship? Um, so for example, when we look at price elasticity of demand, we want to know how big is the change? How responsive are we to a change in the market? So Price elasticity of demand will focus on changes in prices. So just think of an example in your life when, let's just say, you've purchased a product before and the price has increased or drastically increased. How will you change your consumption habits? Or if the price decreases, how much will you purchase more of this product? Again, we're looking at the overall market. So originally we have um, individual demands or we have demand schedules that's showing willingness to pay for each product or a certain amount of quantity. Now we're looking at the market demand. That's the sum of all individuals in this market. So we're trying to measure elasticity of the market or elasticity of demand in this case. All right, so we're gonna go over what it means to be elastic and inelastic. So elastic meaning you are highly responsive to price change. So if the price increases by 20%, you're gonna see a decrease greater than 20% in um, form of a consumption. So the quantity demanded will decrease by more than 20%. I'll say it again, elastic, meaning you're highly responsive to price change. If the price increases, you'll see quantity demanded decrease. Now, inelastic, meaning less elastic, this is saying if the price increases, you're gonna see a small drop off in quantity demanded, uh, but overall, you'll still wanna purchase um, this product. Again, we'll see the different characteristics between elastic and inelastic. So for example, elastic is a good that could be, um, well, there's a lot of substitutes. So for example, if we talk about sodas, specific types of soda. So to Pepsi, are there a lot of substitutes? Yes, there's Coke, there's uh, the Great Value versions, um, there's different um, options available to you. So that's would be, that would be something much more elastic. Again, if the price increases for this product, you're gonna consume less of this product because you have more substitutes available to you. We'll talk a little bit more, that in a, a, more about that in a bit. Inelastic, meaning that you most likely have less substitutes available. So for example, some less substitutes for uh, would be gasoline. There are not that many substitutes available to you. So again, it's inelastic. Again, there's a lot of other uh, concepts that we'll look at. And also the more broad the category, the more inelastic it is. So for example, clothing. What's the alternative to clothing or what's a substitute to clothing? No clothing. So again, it's very inelastic. If price increases, you'll see a small drop off, but you'll still consume these products. So think of different examples that um, fall into each category. So elastic versus inelastic. All right, so now we're gonna go over the different determinants of elasticity. So the first determinant is availability of substitutes. So for example, the more substitutes that are available, the more uh, elastic it will be. Now the less substitutes available, the less elastic or inelastic it will be. So example for goods with a lot of substitutes, you have canned vegetables, breakfast cereals, um, many type of products that have multiple brands. These are more elastic. You have a variety um, to choose from. If a price increases of one good, you have other to choose from. Now, something that is, uh, if there's less substitutes, it's going to be less elastic or inelastic. An example of this would be um, Broadway theater tickets, rare coins, autographs, um, electricity, tickets to the Super Bowl. Again, there's not a very, there's not a lot of different um, options available for you there, these are much more inelastic. So if the price increases, you'll see a small drop off, but you will still see individuals consuming this product. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the, um, the amount spent from your budget. So the share of your budget spent on the good, so if the demand is more elastic, or it's a big ticket item, this makes up a larger portion of your income. So meaning, um, Stuff that you uh, spend more on, so for example, a car, your apartment, it's gonna be much more elastic. So if you see a 10% increase in your rent, you're more likely to change your behavior. That's a couple more dollars and you're spending a lot of your money on this product already. You might think to relocate. Now demand is more inelastic for inexpensive items. So for example, if we say you go to the supermarket and you see Reese's and Reese's is 
uh, 20% more expensive than it usually is. In this case, you'll still purchase this product because again, it's a trivial item. That's not something that's a necessity to you. Um, you will still purchase this product and you're not going to change your behavior based on this. Now, for example, if you were to go into the market to buy a car um, and you see an increase in the price by 20%, you might be less likely to purchase a car because that's going to be a larger amount. You're going to be spending much more on your car from this. Now, the third and final um, determinant of elasticity is the time and adjustment process. So basically, in the long run, things are much more elastic. The reason being because in the long run, there's going to be more um, substitutes available in the long run. So for example, right now, let's just say um, gas powered cars. This is going to be much more, um, much more inelastic in the short run because there's not a lot of alternatives available for everyone. Let's just say people can't afford to have electric vehicles. Let's say in the future now, um, there's going to be more, uh, more electric vehicles more autonomous uh, vehicles, you won't be driving anymore, or driverless cars. So again, this is going to change behavior and in the long run you'll have more substitutes. Another example of this would be, let's just say, um, there's only one soda company right now and you can only purchase from this one soda company. Um, you don't have that many options, so it's inelastic. If the price increases, you're still going to purchase a product. But now let's say 20 years down the road, there's other companies that enter the soda market um, in, and are selling their products. So now things become more elastic because you have more time to adjust, you can pr um, produce more products, um, more people enter the market, and again, so long run, things are mostly um, inelastic in the short run, for the most part they're inelastic. It's harder to change your uh, consumption habits in the short run. Okay, so the next thing we're going to uh, talk about is why is elasticity important? Why do businesses care about this so much? Well, for one, it's important to know if I increase the price for my uh, product, um, how is demand going to respond? Are people going to want more or less? Is this elastic or inelastic? So this kind of helps with the pricing strategy. And also, um, it'll show should we impose a tax? Should we use a tax in order to generate some form of revenue? Um, what can we do with our pricing? So that's another big thing to look at. The next thing we're going to talk about is the formula. So the formula in this case for the elasticity of demand is the percent change in percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. So we want to see how do we change our behavior based on a change in price. So that's a big thing here. Um, there's a lot of different elasticities we're going to measure, but for now we're just going to talk about elasticity of demand. So anytime you see P-E-O-D, it's price elasticity of demand. Now anytime you see a delta or triangle, this is um, denoting a change. So what's happening? Now uh, there's various examples we can go about this. You'll have various problems to do, um, but for now, after you calculate the price elasticity of demand, after we plug in numbers, the key thing we need to do is to take the absolute value. Now this is only for the price elasticity of demand. Now for the other elasticity of demands that we'll talk about, it'll be a little different. But in the, for price elasticity of demand, so P-E-O-D, you take the absolute value. Now the reason being is because we're going to measure if this is elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic. And we'll go over each single one. So. After you plug in all these numbers, you'll get a number. You'll get an answer, and then from there you're going to drop them into certain categories. E is elasticity. Now, if E is greater than 1, this means it is elastic, meaning you are highly responsive to price change. If E is less than 1, or elasticity is less than 1, this is inelastic. Now in this case, when something's inelastic, you're less responsive. So if the price changes or the price increases, you'll see a small decrease, but it's not going to be as large as the um, percent change in price decrease. Now the last one is unit elastic, when it equals 1. Unit elastic is basically, it's the same proportional change. If there's a 10% increase in price, there's going to be a 10% decrease in quantity demanded. And if you do the math, if there's an increase in 10% and a decrease in 10%, it's going to equal 1. So again, it's a unit um, elasticity, and um, in this case, it's a proportional change. Now another thing this can show us is the slope 
or uh, the curvature of our demand curve. The steeper it is, so the steeper it is, it's going to be inelastic. The flatter it is, it's going to be more elastic. And that unit elastic will be a same proportional change. So again, you'll see some problems throughout and we'll do a review um, on how these uh, all show up. We'll do a practice problem now. So we're going to say the university, um, the school you go to, um, the parking pass increases by 50%. So prices increase by 50% and a result of this will be 25% fewer people demand a parking pass. So first thing, what I always tell students to do is write out your formula. Percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price and you plug in what I've told you. So there is a decrease of 25% in quantity demanded and there is an increase of prices by 50%. Now after you do all this math you should get negative 0.5. Now we're not done yet. The thing we need to do is take the absolute value. So now what this is actually is 0 0.5. Now would we determine this to be inelastic, elastic, or unit elastic? The correct answer is inelastic. Again, it's less than one. So we're saying they're less responsive to price change. Now think of this um, intuitively. If we increase the price of parking passes, why do, still, why do students still want to purchase parking passes? So in the comment section, I want you guys to Lee, why would students still want to purchase parking passes even if the price has increased by 50%? Why do we only see a 25% drop off? So answer in the comment section below, you'll get a couple extra credit points. Um, so yeah. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about, the main thing I want to get across is elasticity is a measure of sensitivity or responsiveness to um, between two variables. So in our case, when we look at price elasticity of demand, we're looking at a change in price. How does a change in price change our uh, consumption behavior. Why do we demand more or why do we demand less? So think of times when you've gone to the grocery store or to the mall or your online shopping. If there's an increase in price, are you more likely or less likely to purchase this product? Are you, um, are you more likely because it's a necessity? Are you less, li less likely because it's a luxury? Again, all these things play a role in everyday habits. So again, it's important to know what price is set. If you do increase the price, will people stop purchasing your product if you're a firm? Um, as a consumer, you want to maximize your own potential or your own profits or your own benefit. Whatever it may be, you're trying to maximize that. So you're not trying to um, just spend all of your money. You want to use it to its maximum potential, assuming that you are rational. So again, this stuff is applicable to everyday life. So when you see sales at the store, um, why does that um, make you want to purchase more of this product? If you see um, an increase in price, why does that deter you from purchasing more of this product? Or if there is a price increase, why do you want to go out and buy more? Maybe uh, for the most part it's because you need it and you're willing to purchase this product. Now understanding elasticity helps make our economic models much more informative about the world. And again, it's important to know the price elasticity of demand. So the formula again is the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Other than that, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.